Okay, we're going to take a look at some graphical interpretations of kinematics here. Okay, I've brought up a more functional graph for us for this set of videos for velocity versus time. Now, of the important things to remember are what we can tell from each of the types of charts. So what I've laid out before, if I've got a position versus time graph, so these are always versus time, if I have a position versus time, I can go to the velocity, I can find my velocity by looking at the slope at a given point. I can also go from a velocity versus time to the acceleration by looking at the slope. Okay? And then the other steps that I have, in fact, let's, uh, let's redo that with color, shall we? So we'll do slope and area under the curve. If we look at the area under the curve from an acceleration versus time, we can find out our velocity. And from our velocity versus time, we can get our position. Okay, so let's start off. We're on a velocity versus time graph. We can tell two bits of information. We can find our acceleration in a given period, or we can find the displacement over a given period. So let's start off with the acceleration. And so if I, blue may have been a poor choice on this, but if I want to find the acceleration from here, t equals four, to here, t equals five, I'm going to look for the slope right here, the slope of that line. Okay, well my slope, m equals rise over run. Okay, so my rise, I go from zero meters per second, that may be hard to read, but my units are meters per second. And down here I have seconds as my unit. So my rise is from zero all the way up to looks like two meters per second. Oh, I'm sorry. My rise is my final y, so two meters per second, minus my initial y, which is going to be zero meters per second, divided by, okay, my run. Well, I go, my final is x final, so to speak, is five seconds, minus my initial, which is four seconds. Okay, so that comes up to 2 meters per second divided by 1 second. Well, that's meters per second divided by second, which gives me units of meters per second squared. And 2 divided by 1 is 2. My acceleration over that period is 2 meters per second squared. All right. So, I've used my slope to find my acceleration there. Let's clear this off. find the acceleration at another location. How about we go from here, it's like t equals 8, all the way over to here, 9. That one gives me a line like this, goes down like that, and I want to find my slope there. Okay, well if I find my slope I've got m equals rise run. I'm going to put that over here so I've got some room. M equals. I've got a situation where my rise, my y final, is going to be here, which is one meter per second. My y initial is up here, which is eight meters per second. So final is one meter per second minus initial eight meters per second divided by my run, which is going to be nine seconds minus eight seconds. Okay, well this gives me minus seven meters per second divided by one second. I almost wrote meters in there. I need to keep track of my own units. One second. All right. Well, for this, I end up with, this comes over to a value of negative seven meters per second squared. Pretty, pretty high value. That's almost a G 
Okay? You'll notice that I have a negative sign. Well, that's because this guy is sloped downwards. All right, so we played around with, those, with both positive and negative slopes. If you've got a situation where it goes more than one second, although I think I've got this changing for the most part every second, then you would end up with something like two seconds below, and I'd end up with, in this case, negative 3.5, that sort of thing. And so it all depends on what you've got, what area you're looking at.